بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين وأفضل الصلاة وعتم التسليم على محمد خاتم النبيين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم افتح فتوه العارفين اللهم افتح علينا حكمتك وانشر علينا رحمتك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا ذا الجلال والإكرام الحمد لله praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessing of this majlis praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a tawfiq to remember him and his beloved prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alhamdulillah beautiful qasaid and uh, anashid beautiful nasiha that we've had alhamdulillah we had a bit from Medina we had a bit from Makkah mashallah we've got some guests inshallah they're going to be leaving us inshallah going to the haram inshallah may Allah bless their journey inshallah time to bring back some khair and barakah inshallah for us as well but hearing these beautiful you know this the haramain the sharifain it just fills our heart with that wanting to get there. May Allah all, send all of us there, inshallah. Amen. Amen. And may our final words Amen. be inside Medina. Amen. May we be buried inside Medina Amen. with the Sahaba and the Blessed Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And never lose hope. Always ask, the Prophet would always ask, the Sahaba, Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab would always ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for that, Oh Allah, let, us, let, let me die in your path. Oh Allah, let me die in the city of your Habib Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was a person who granted that, wasn't he? It's not, it's not ba'id for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. When you ask of Allah, don't ask like, if you want, give it as please. There's none of that. When you ask, you ask you're asking not your friend, you're not asking one of your, you know, the, the town mayor or somebody, or the queen of England. You're asking Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the Malikul Muluk. The king of all kings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you ask him, you ask with full conviction that you, what you're going to get, you're going to get. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the one who made the Sahaba when, when they were confronted by the oceans. He said, Allah's messing yourselves and told me to go. Ya Allah, make it happen. And they just used to walk on water. And what, what can make you even imagine these kind of things? When, uh, um, when, when, when the awliya would, would be walking in air and people would be saying, MashaAllah, karama. They, they would see that there was a, a an earthquake in Samarkand, around Samarkand, Sir Hind, and Mujad al Fetani, Rahmatullah, just got his miswak out, placed it onto the mountain, and the earthquake stopped in its place. And everybody was wondering, MashaAllah, what a beautiful karama. We've, had, we've seen a miracle on your hands. He says, That's not a miracle. He says, You did one sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu makes you beloved to Allah. Allah will make many miracles like this happen on your hands. He says, forget that sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But he says, if we forgot the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I want to hear from the scientists and the doctors. And it's ajib, it's ajib. When, 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 when we see the people, I used to have a friend who was um, ill. And uh, he was one of those that went, if, he could, if he had to take away two, three cheeseburgers, he can finish them all in one go. But he was one of those that when, suddenly, when he, I, went, I went to visit him. And what happened was he suddenly came across and he, he said, we said, can't let's go out for a meal. He says, no, 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 I don't eat anything. So he said, but you love eating. That's, that's what you're famous for. And he's one of those that just ate and he had hollow legs. He could just eat and eat. And he was, that day he says, no, 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 I don't want to eat. So he, said, he says, why are you not eating? So we asked, we said, you know, this, what's wrong? Is there something wrong with you? You've got off food or something? He says, no. He goes, doctor's orders. He says, doctor said, he says, because of my illness, I've, I've become a bit ill. Doctor said, I can't eat this, I can't have junk food, etc, etc. So, so it just made me think, and that conversation was, that was it. But the conversation in my head kept going. And it's a jeep, isn't it? That thing what the doctor was telling him to stop was no doubt halal. He was eating halal, he was HMC. There's no doubt. <laughs> but that's something which was halal, and he listened to the doctor why is it that we don't listen when the Prophet says to stop us from haram? Is it Muaz and Aluk, the doctor we believe? Uh, he said it. No, 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 no. He said it. I can't go away from the doctor because he cares for me. 
Can you show me anybody who cares for you more than the Prophet ﷺ? Anybody more, more concerned in the heart for you, for the Ummah of his ﷺ? And it shows all your compassionate ones and all your caring ones of this world. They'll come with you to the edge of your grave. How many of those caring ones will even come in your grave? And that's my master Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He'll be there waiting for you inside your grave to enlighten your, your put nur into that dark place that you call the grave. He'll be there on the day of judgment, holding you by your waistbands so you don't slip from the from from the on the bridge. He'll be there to sort out your hisab on the day of judgment. That's the caring one sallallahu alaihi wasallam that we've been afforded. We're speaking about the, the foods of the Prophet ﷺ, the drinks of the Prophet ﷺ. That's what, that's what our life should be now. Not what we did or what we, our preferences are. Our preferences should be in line with that being ﷺ, so that Allah's rahmah can come down upon you. It's not about Eid. This, this izza that the Ummah had once can also come now. It is not closed. The doors of Nubuwat have been closed with the final Prophet ﷺ. But the doors of wilaya, the doors of the sunnah, remain all the way until the day of judgment. He's the Nabi Akhir Zaman. He's a final prophet. And finality, khatam, is the khatim. Both of them, you can say. And khatam means that he's the seal of all the prophets. Khatim is a final of all the succession of all the prophets. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So his qawl and his message is going to be universal. It's going to go beyond like being any from a certain group or a certain sect or a certain community this transcends beyond that let's bring the ummah back together okay. we're broken up into so many small pieces allah allah what will the heart of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam be feeling when he hears that this we're broken up in, into factions fighting with each other now is the time to unite the people and the love of the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam his akhlaq we spoke about the akhlaq akhlaq is that which shines through everything he says, before you, لَنْفَدُّ مِنْ حَالِكَ As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَنْفَدُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ He says, yeah. if we didn't make you soft-hearted and gentle, O Messenger Muhammad, Allah Allah says, He says, لَنْفَدُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ He says, they would have dispersed away from around you. Habib Umar, may Allah preserve him and may, may, may we continue to benefit from him. He says, لَنْفَدُّ مِنْ حَالِكَ He says, he goes, with you is different. He says, they'll run away from your hal. He says, you know what he's saying? He says, your character. Your character has become so filthy nowadays that it's come so far away from the, the hal of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And sometimes the, your hal can speak better than your maqal. Your hal can speak more profound and have more power impacting word than impacting than any word can ever do. That's real da'wah. And what do people see when they walk in? You, you might be calling someone to Islam and they just pass you by in the town center or across the street and you, you're just passing them every morning on your commute to work. You don't even know they become Muslim and it's all in your hasanat. Just because of the way you were, because you smiled or because you said, let a person go, that's akhlaq. And that's what we need to be. You know, it's, it's a beautiful thing that our teachers uh, mentioned that ilm isn't that which is, is memorized. It's too many people that can quote you know, references from this book and that book. And that, that's not knowledge. Knowledge is that which, which you act upon. It forces you to you know, abstain from disobedience and act in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's ilm. ilm. You can look at the words ayn la mim. That's the word that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used for knowledge. Ilm. If those people who do makhraj, we've got a beautiful tajweed teacher here. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong. He says ayn, ayn starts from there. The makhraj is there. Right from the throat. The, 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 ayn, lam. Lam is going to be from your tongue. And meem is going to be from your, your, your lips. Look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Even in the words, there's going to be some beauty inside of it. And then it starts off that it has to be an internalized thing. Ayn, knowledge. That's the first starting point of knowledge. It starts right inside. And it should be internalized. As soon as we learn something, we says, right. I know somebody who doesn't do that. I'm going to go sort him out. Is that what, you, is that what knowledge is there for? So you can boast upon other people or, or call yourself superior or whatever. Thereafter, it comes upon the da'wah. Da'wah. That you have to start giving calling people towards this thing that you have internalized first. Second, that you call people towards it. I look at the likes of Sheikh Sa'di, the, the sahib of Gulista Bosta. Oh, what a beautiful... For those people who learn, understand Farsi, 
Uh, that's, when, they, when they open them books, you're in a different zone. You're with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was a poet, he was a wali of Allah. He's, he's, he spent his first portion of his life was yani, Allah, 40 years of his life. 40 years of his life that he spent in ilm. Allah Akbar. That's 40 years of his life. And we do crash courses on the weekend and call ourselves Allama. <laughs> It's ajeeb, isn't it? And that's the hug that knowledge is. 40, after that, he says, he spent the next 20 years that, that, that he was propagating this, this ilm that he learned. 20 years. Uh, that's taken to 60. Then after that, he spent another 20 years fi uh, uh, he, he says, I'm picking up the sword. And he went out in the path of Allah to defend the frontiers of Islam, etc., etc. That's, that was that was after that, and then after that he says the last twenty is the the last twenty of his years. He lived over 100, 120. Uh, that's going to be a person who what? Then he sp- he says he says now enough of everybody. Now it's Allah. He spent that's that's dedication. And that's the person and doing it the right way. That so you internalize everything, you bring everything back in, and do everything anything as insignificant. Whatever we do, we do it for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. By Allah. It doesn't mean that you need to do like 40 years. Oh, I'm going to try that. And you go ahead and try it, mashallah. May Allah give you tawfiq. May Allah give us all tawfiq, inshallah. We can't do without ilm. But ilm is that which needs to be internalized. You learn one half and you act upon it is really beautiful. Better than a thousand nawafil, as the Prophet ﷺ informed us. That's what we need to be. We need to be those who act upon it. A little thing we don't realize how far the, you know, the, the beauty of it will go. And you don't understand these things. The Mahmud Ghaznawi, he was, he was a, a wali of Allah. He was from the, the uh, ulama of this ummah. And he was a king as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him. And these were the pious kings of the time. And when they said that rulers are usually the ones who are the, the wretched ones and people have to always keep them in check. This wasn't one of them. Sultan Bahlul Dana, rahmatullahi in his time, he had a king who used to be the shagird of him. Yeah, there used to be a Bacha Alam Gir, Rahmatullah. These these were pious. He used what he used to be he used to own a sultanate of the in you know the, the Mughal Empire. And they used to, they, what he used to do, he used to make topis for people to pray salah in and he used to write Quran with his hand. Oh. And that's how he used to feed him and his family. And I wonder, you know, the money of the treasury. The Baytul Mal is for the people, he used to give it to the people. The uh, Mahmud Ghaznawi Rahmatullah is a great wali of Allah. He was a king, he was a really powerful king. And he was passing by, and he would like to go out amongst his people. And he would go out amongst his people just to see what's happening amongst his people. Is there anybody that, you know, has Umar the Aladdin style? He would walk out, he'd find out, what, is there anybody in need? So he saw this old man, and he was, he was, he was, he was planting this tree. So he, and th- there's two options. You, you, can, you can think of this old, feeble man. He says, what, what is he doing? He says, look at him, he, he, he's greedy. Even now he's still thinking about growing more fruits and so he can make more money. You can look at it like that. Or you can say, what's the point? This old man here, he's going to be dying soon. What, what's the point in putting a little, you know, like a, a tree and it's going to grow up and it's going to take ages for these fruits to come bear fruit? He came up to this old man, he, he stopped his conveyance and he says, look, it's an old man, he says, this, what you're doing is futile, it's, it's, there's no point. He says, when are you going to be able to benefit from, the, from these fruits? You're never going to be able to benefit. So, he said, so the old man, he says, a beautiful answer. He says, he says he goes, you, you're looking at it wrong. He says, I'm planting it because I benefited from the ones that ours planted, so we benefited. I'm planting so that the ones who come after will benefit from what we plant today. So he says, he says, wow, he says, what an answer. He says, that kind of a thought is what the people I need in my, in, in my palace. He says, you're really clever. He says, give him a bag of gold. So he gives him a bag of gold. So he says, cool. So then he says another jumla, this old man. He says, look, he says, he says you're tra- you, you started your conversation with me. And you're trying to tell, you were saying that you're going to have to wait such a long time for these fruits to grow and you're not going to be able to benefit. He says, look at my plant here. It's already given me fruit already. So he says, Subhan, he says, what kind of an old man is this? He says, give him another bag. 
he says, he says, he goes, oh, Bacha, he says, he goes, you know what? He says, he goes, normal plants, he says, he goes, they, they bear fruit once a year and then you have to wait till the next year. He says, look at this plant. He says, it's, it's, it's not even a year old and stuff. He says, and I'm already getting two lots. He's giving me fruits twice. So he says, he says, mashallah, he goes, keep giving him. And he keeps, and the story goes on and stuff. I, I don't have time to show it. But the point is, look at the you look at the thinking that we have. What are we going to present to the next generation? The times are really, really, really changing. And it's the time of yani, uh, atharat, what the Prophet ﷺ called the times of opposites. Where we're going to see things are going to be flipped upside down. You're going to see the educated ones are going to be treated like johal. Yeah, and there's going to be two. There's going to be a you know, a battle between ilm and it's going to be and and jahala, ignorance, and that's where ilm is. The ulama are going to be slowly taken away because of this, and jahala is going to rise. You're going to see that coming, but that doesn't mean that we just we do, we just accept it. It's going to happen. Let us not be that process inside of it. Ilm. What I'm saying is, ilm is that which we need to internalize. We need to act upon. People need to see a change inside of you. How many majalis are we going to come before people say, wow, I can see that change. What's happened? What are you doing different? That's what we need to see. Now, ilm isn't that where we become alims or call, be called alims or malvis or whatever you want to call. These are just, you know, man-made titles. Titles is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he, he declares in the heavens that you're hujjatul islam. The proof of Islam, Al Ghazali, Rahmatullah Alayhi. You Shaykh al Islam, Zakari al Ansari, Rahmatullah Alayhi. These are titles that are given in the heavens, not by you and I. These are real titles. Then it literally, if you went up to uh, uh, Imam Ghazali, uh, uh, Imam Fakhruddin Razi, Rahmatullah Alayhi, and you called them a jahil to their face, they wouldn't be offended at the l- nothing at all. At all. Why? Because it isn't that status that they wanted. They just wanted pure knowledge to come. They wanted to take knowledge, practice it, and then pass it on, and that's it. Now, if somebody just comes to you and says, he goes, you know, you, you, you jahil, you know, jahil. We, we, our, our honor, our egos will be offended. If somebody turns and says, mashallah, you, 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 you go to the majlis. Mashallah, you're well clever, you, you're an alim, you, sheikh. They just call you sheikh once and wow. And seriously, do we feel good? That's our ego. And we have to break our egos. It's a time of egos when the Prophet ﷺ says that you're know, fighting it, you know, it's gonna be and holding on to your religion is gonna be like holding on to a, a piece of coal. May Allah make it easy for us, inshallah. May Allah bless us in whatever we're learning. We have to internalize these. We every week in, week out, we hear about the shamail of the Prophet. ﷺ. What changes? We need to make these changes now. The Prophet ﷺ, in the final hadith we mentioned last time. كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمِ إِذَا اسْتَنَّ أَعْطَى السِّوَاكَ الْأَكْبَرِ The Prophet ﷺ, when he would use the miswak, that he would give it to the eldest amongst them, honouring them, to take the barakah from the Prophet ﷺ, no doubt, and to share. This is something which they would share in them days. وَإِذَا شَرِبَ أَعْطِ الَّذِي أَنْ يَمِينِهِ And when the Prophet ﷺ would have something to drink, he would, he would leave a bit, he would pass it on to the people on the right of him always. This is sunnah. When you're in a majlis, you pass it to the right. Not the, 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 this uh, harming given to the left, but the Prophet would prefer that way. And we're going to see this beautiful hadith. وَكَانَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ وَلَا The Prophet ﷺ would, would uh, take sips when he would drink the water. Little, little sips. So it, it, is, it doesn't flood your, your, your kidneys or whatever you have. Rather, he would have وَلَا يُعُبُّ عَبَّنْ So he, he would take sips and he wouldn't gulp it down. That's what the Prophet was way that he he taught us. Now the scientists and doctors are going to tell you that oh, it's the best, it's the best way to do it. Take little sips rather than gulping the whole. Uh, so that's the way the shaitan drinks. The shaitan drinks in one gulp. The Prophet Sallallahu little sips, little sips all the time, and that's that's easier in your stomach. It's more beneficial for you. وَكَانَ يَدْفَعُ فَضْلَ سُؤْنِهِ إِلَى مَنْ عَلَى يَمِينِهِ and the Prophet would always give the leftover water, the su'ar they call it in Arabic, the leftover water or whatever, and he would give it to the person on the right. Now, so, sometimes, you know, we're in the, I don't know, maybe in this society and stuff, you know, like, you, they don't want to share a lot. More so in America, more so in the West as well. But they don't want to share these things. Ah, oh, that's your, your glass, I don't want to touch. The Prophet, there's no doubt, we're not even speaking about that. But I'm speaking about the normal believers. 
just في سور المؤمنين الشفاء in the leftovers of the believers the shifa subhanallah so you know when you eat together when you when you share a glass or whatever you do that's the things and even your families there's no doubt everybody inshallah should be doing increases love between the families the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has an aisha radiyallahu anha such a beautiful hadith and it just shows how far we are the has an aisha radiyallahu anha when she when she was when she first married and she came to the house of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam She used to be young, she used to be mischievous and whatever she used to you know, be in herself, in her nature. But when, when she would be with the Prophet she was having that tarbiyah done. So she would sometimes, she would take a sip of this glass and she would leave it there. And she would see with, with the corner of her eye, what is the Prophet going to be doing? So she, she would see that the Prophet would take it, he would search for where she'd taken a sip from, where, you know, where her, 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 her lips had placed. And he would do the exactly the same, and she would go shy, and she would run off. That's what she would do. That's the hal of the you know the Prophet sallallahu and the wives of the Prophet sallallahu has no doubt taken barakah from that beautiful part. It's going to be beautiful. The Prophet sallallahu no doubt, but likewise in the believers, we should also be doing that. You taking the su'ad to for shifa, it gives you cure from illness as well. For in kana ala, for in kana man ala yasarihi ajalla rudbatan. قال للذي على يمينه السنة أن تقطع فإن أحببت أثرتهم If there was anybody that was on the left hand side now So the, the proper way, the preferred method was You give it to the right But if there was somebody on the left hand side Who was of a superior uh, rank or elder Or your, your saintly person Then the, he would give it to the one on the, uh, he, would, he would ask for permission So he would say a sunnah and ta'ta. So he says to the one on the right, he says, the proper uh, the method is that I should give it to the one on the right. He says, but, he says, if you choose, then I can give it to the one on the left because the elder or whatever. And that way, the, he would ask permission of the one on the right. This hadith that the Musanif brings, and Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu maqal, so now Ibn Ab- Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala is a real beautiful riwayah. He says, دخلت مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنا وخالد بن وليد رضي الله تعالى عنه. He says, so saying that Abdullah ibn Abbas is the Rawi. He's saying that I and Khalid bin so I was with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and and Khalid bin Walid. He says, على ميمونة we entered upon has a ميمونة رضي الله تعالى عنها وأرضاها بنت الحارث ابن حزن الهلالية العامرية. The wife of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. فجاءتنا بإناء من لبن. She came, uh, she came, she brought out a, a vessel or a, a container which had water, um, milk inside. فشرب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam drank from this. وأنا على يمينه. And he said, and I was on the right hand side. So, Abdullah ibn Abbas is saying, right? He said, I was on the right side. وخالد عن شمال. <laughs> and he says. Khalid bin Walid, he was on the on the, on the left hand side. فَقَالَ لِي أَشْرَبَتُ لَكَ فَإِنْ شِئْتَ أَثَرْتَ بِهَا خَالِدًا He says, he says the, this part, the next drink is for you, O Abdullah ibn Abbas. He says, but if you want, give it to Khalid. Why is he saying that first of all? It's not mentioned, but Khalid, at this time when, when, when the hadith is being mentioned, Khalid bin Walid has just become, he's, he's a new Muslim. He's just coming to Islam. So to be kind, in, to show him the honor. Secondly, that he's older than Abdullah ibn Abbas. So he's an elder in that. Thirdly, that he's the leader of the Banu Makhzum. He's, he's a leader in himself. So he doesn't feel slighted or that oh, they didn't give me the honor. I'm just coming to Islam and look at these. They don't honor their chiefs. Or the, or, he wouldn't do that. But just in case he does, he says, give it to him. That, that's a request from the Prophet ﷺ. But the Prophet said, look at the way he said it as well. He says, the right is yours. Look at that. He's not telling him, give it to him. He said, the right is yours. If you wish, then you can give it. He says, فَإِن شِرْتَ آثَرْتَ بِهَا خَالِد If you want, I'll give it to Khalid. فَقُلْتُ مَا كُنْتُ لَأُوثِرَ عَلَى سُؤْنِكَ أَحَدًا He says, he says I will never give whatever you've left over to anybody, he says, that's not going to happen today. <laughs> and that's the time to be uh, selfish. Uh, I'll, I'll probably do the same. 
And in that time, you get the chance to get a tape straight from the Prophet I ain't going to give that to nobody. But uh, Ibn Hajar Rahmatullah mentions in this, in this hadith at the end, he says, but the way he worded his answer, he wasn't saying, no, I'm not going to give it. He just said, ma kuntu la uthiru. So he gives his excuse first. So he's saying that you you give me an option and I'm, 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 I'm giving you as uh, this is my answer, but I'm not saying no to the Prophet Sallallahu even in his answer in, in Arabic, it's beautiful. Yeah. That they don't want to disobey the Prophet yeah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But he doesn't want to... He's not going to give that chance up. <laughs> May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala give us that beautiful yeah. drink yeah. for the Prophet yeah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah. 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 Inshallah. Thumma qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then the hadith continues. It says, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then said, Man atamahu Allah ta'aman falyakul. Whoever Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gives food to. Then let him say, Allahumma barik lana fihi wa at'imna khayran minhu. It's a beautiful short dua. You should, I mean, everyone try to do it. Allahumma barik lana fihi. Oh Allah blesses in this. Wa at'imna khayran minhu. And give us better than it. Mm-hmm. Better than it means, as the ulama said, he says, i.e. that you can, you've got the food of Jannah, the, the, the world Allah's given you. Give us Jannah, for, paradisal food, inshallah. That's what you're asking for. Allahumma barik lana fihi. It's a beautiful dua. And the hadith continues. He says, Whoever Allah gives milk to, فَقُلْ اللَّهُمَّ بَارِكْ لَنَا فِيهِ وَزِدْنَا مِنْهُ Allah blesses in it and gives us an increase. And he says, that the, ثُمَّ قَالْ قَالْ رَسُولُ So the Rawi said, he says that the Prophet says, لَيْسَ شَيْءٌ يُجْزِعُ مَكَانَ الطَّعَامِ وَشَرَابِ غَيْرَ الْلَبَنِ he says, Allah has not created another thing which can do the job of food and drink like, like he can with milk. Oh, Allah has man. blessed it. If a person can't find any food, doesn't matter. If you got milk, your job's a good one. If you can't find any drink or water, even water, if you have milk, that's going gonna, gonna to keep you hydrated. And it's beautiful. That's the one thing that Allah has created like that. And that's why, that's why he's saying, Allah mazidna. Allah give us an increase in that. Allah, Allah, he's asking us to ask for an increase in that. May Allah give us barakah in, in our food and our drink. Wa kana sallallahu alayhi wasallam yashabu qa'idan. This this next part goes into how the Prophet Sallallahu would drink. And for those who are intending the, you know, inshallah, the well of Zamzam, inshallah, there's going to be some adab coming. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would drink sitting. Wa kana thalika adatuhu. And this was the the normal habit of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That he would always sit down and drink the water. Rawah Muslim. And this is another riwayat that the Prophet in fact prohibited anyone from drinking while standing up. Now let's let's I'll, I'll come back to that in a minute. Mu'ad ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma anna nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam shariba min zamzama wa huwa qa'iman. This riwayat of Ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Abbas again radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. That the Prophet Sallallahu when he was, he was drinking Zamzam, a blessed water of Zamzam, a ma'u Zamzam in lima shuribala. Whatever whatever intention you make when you drink the Zamzam, Allah blesses you with that. May Allah give us tawfiq, inshallah. So he says, when the Prophet was drinking the Zamzam, wa huwa qa'imun, so he was drinking the uh, Zamzam whilst he was standing. So how do you then do the big, he's warned people or he prohibited them from drinking while standing and his normal was that he would drink sitting so the ulama said he says that it's going to be that the norm would be that sit but he stood sometimes like because of different riwayat as well that's not mentioned here Tirmizi Sharif mentions it as well not in Shamail Tirmizi but in Tirmizi Sharif this is the Prophet ﷺ would drank standing up as well so he's to show that it's permissible that if you're in a place for example that you're in the middle of a, a crowd and suddenly you crouch down you're going to get crushed so the, likewise, at the time of the well of Zamzam, there's a crowd, everyone's trying to get there. At that time, because of the crowd, the Prophet stood and he drank over there. The asal in the Shafi'i school is that even with Zamzam, you sit down. And there's going to be you know, pros and cons and what, what the ulama have said, that when you stand for Zamzam, it's got you know, the uniqueness. That because the Prophet stood for it, you stand for it as well. And the thing is that when you when you drink it standing, it goes through your body. All the barakah goes through faster. There's all them things. But likewise, the sunnah was a norm. If you do that once, that's fine. 
Norm would be you sit down and drink it. You sit down and drink as a norm. If you're at work and there's no places that all people might not understand, whatever your circumstances may be, if you find your place that you, that you can't sit down, then you can do it. There's going to be nothing that's khilaf a sunnah. That's the Prophet out of his mercy that he did them. You know, that's the, uh, the misunderstanding of our time. We always think that Islam is black and white. There's this way that's going to get you to paradise and only this way. The Prophet and through his mercy that he did it one time this way, he did it one time another way. And the, you know, the Imams, they came along and they said, do this way and then do this way according to their ilm. This is the beauty of the Sunnah that's making it easier for us. So that if we're in a position where someday we, we want to stand, and we can't sit down. Alhamdulillah. If we sit, if we're at home, or we're in a you know you know confines of our space. When we see our children, we should tell them to sit down and drink the water always. This is the best way to do it, and it's it's, it's greater in health benefits as well. Wa kana sallallahu alaihi wasallam yahmilu ma zamzam, and the Prophet ﷺ would carry around the water of zamzam as well. So he'd collect it in a container. He'd carry it. He'd drink from it. He'd pass it to his his companions. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. وعن عبد الله بن عمر بن العاص رضي الله تعالى عنهما قال رأيت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سنة عمر بن العاص رضي الله تعالى says that he saw the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم يشرب قائما وقائدا he saw the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم drinking whilst he was standing and some and once when and and when he was sitting and standing rather وعن النزال بن سبرة this next hadith is going to continue with this of how the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم we would drink and how he drank and what he drank from these all things that are coming up inshallah may allah give us tawfiq may allah give us the blessed drink of the hold of the prophet that is a drink that you'll never feel thirsty thereafter thirst as you know it in the body of a human will be gone once you take a sip from that so what about in paradise then there's going to be all these drinks and there's going to be waterfalls and oceans of your favorite drink or whatever that's just going to be purely for pleasure. It's going to be nothing. You're not going to. You're not going to feel thirsty. You're going to remember maybe if if if, if you like coke or whatever, uh, the gel juice, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> if if you do want to have that, then you'll just have it because you, it's just pure pleasure. But after you've tasted, you know, you know the beautiful uh, hold of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and there's going to be I mean, your thirst will be gone, hunger that'll be gone. What you're gonna eat over there in paradise? You're only gonna eat only for pleasure, and there's gonna be no like uh, any burps. There's gonna be no passing wind. There's gonna be no digestion. The digestion over there is just gonna be when you've eaten, you'll just let out a slight burp, and what's gonna be that that wind that will come out is gonna be sweeter than any musk you've ever heard, you've ever smelled, wow. and that's the that's the beauty of that beautiful. You know, even the air of it is just beautiful. Even the even the foods and the drinks. This is we just get a glimpse of how the beautiful foods went in the mouth of the Prophet sallallahu <laughs> Inshallah, we ask Allah that He gathers on the table spread to enjoy food with the Prophet <laughs> in Jannah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa taala for tawfiq. We ask Allah to cure the sick. We ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to fulfill all the desires of those who have desires deep in their heart. We ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to keep us united, and just like He's united us here. May Allah subhanahu wa taala. Unite us with the Prophet Sallallahu in Jannah to fill those on the blessed foods and the drinks of paradise, inshallah.